Psalms 135. Get in verse number. Do remember Sister Kathy in your prayers. She's not been feeling well. Pray the Lord touch her. Psalms 135. In verse number one, the psalmist penned down, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord please, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas, in all deep places. He caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth wind out of his treasuries, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both man and beast, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants, who smote great nations, who slew mighty kings, uh, Sion, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an heritage, an heritage unto Israel. Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for that great love wherein you loved us. Lord, we're thankful you have loved us with an everlasting love. And Lord, we're thankful that you're for us and not against us. For if God be for us, who can be against us? And Father, we're certainly glad to be able to assemble with the people of God on this frosty Sunday morning. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about this place. I pray you'd rest our attention and our hearts. May we honor you. May we glorify you. May we give you truly the praise that you so richly deserve. Now, Lord, if we started at one side of the building and worked our way throughout the building, we'd find out, Lord, that your people have faced much opposition. They've faced obstacles in their lives. They've had hardships and heartaches. But through it all, God, you've been there. Through it all, you've delivered them and you've helped them or you are helping them now. And Father, we thank you for being a great God. Now, Father, I pray if there's anyone in our midst today, strangers to the grace of God, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for the saints of God that, Lord, you'd help them, you'd propel them to greater planes spiritually than they've ever been before. God, send revival these days. Lord, our land is in a mess. Our country's in a mess. Lord, lives are in a mess. Homes are in a mess. And God, we know the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. And God, I pray great revival would break out in your churches and Lord, flood throughout our streets. And God, we'd see America once again be the America of old. And God, I pray that you do great things even in this service this morning. Lord, help those that need help. Lord, that one that's struggling, Lord, or, uh, just inch them along. That one that Father is uh, hurting, I pray for a balm of Gilead. And God, that one seeking, they would find. And God, again, that one that may be lost, we'd see him saved. Now, Father, have your will and way. Use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the refrain of praise. Can I say it's always right to praise the Lord? Can I say that Isaiah 61 says there's a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness? When you're at your lowest, if you can just begin to praise the Lord, He'll lift you from your low estate. The psalmist says, Praise ye the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise Him, O ye servants of the Lord. Hey, the world's not going to praise Him. It's up to you and I to praise Him. It says, Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. 
Sing praises unto his name for it is pleasant. I'm thankful that we got a great God that is worthy of our praise. Mm, the reason we still sing them hymns is because they praise the Lord. Those folks who were inspired to pin down them hymns, they had a little bit of God on them. They knew a little bit about honoring God. We sing them old hymns. The reason we still preach the Word of God is the Word of God tells about the greatness of God. Uh, and I sure do bless His holy name. Uh, I'm glad Brother Bob, when he found us, he didn't leave us where he found us. Uh, I'm glad that he's a great God that changed our lives, uh, that not only changed it for the better now, but changed it for all of eternity. Uh, Brother Doug, time and eternity has been changed because of Jesus Christ. We ought to praise his name. There's a refrain of praise. You know, revival break out if God's people just start praising God. Praise him in the house of God and praise him in the streets. Let folks know where our hope lies. Five times in those first three verses, it tells us to praise the Lord. Five is the number of grace. If you're a recipient of God's grace, you ought to praise the Lord. But then I want you to notice the regard God has for his people. Look at verse number four. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Now, if you're sincere, you're honest this morning, you would ask the question, why would Jesus die for me? Why would he love such a wretch like me? What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? The psalmist said, uh, who are we that God would bleed and die for? I do not know, Brother James, why God loves us so much. But then he called us his peculiar treasure. You see, the world looks at us like we're not screwed onto the right bolt. The world looks at us like uh, we're demented and we're the off-scour of the world. And it's amazing how in this day of crying for civil rights, the one that's the only one that doesn't have rights are Christians. You know, if you stand for what you believe in, uh, 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 you're homophobic and misogynic and I don't even know what all them things mean but that's what they call us uh, I just thought I was saved on my way to heaven and loved Jesus huh? they call us all kinds of names and all kinds of things uh, uh, but I want to tell you what God calls us a peculiar treasure uh, we're to be a peculiar people because we're a peculiar treasure. In Malachi chapter number 4, he said when he comes, he's going to make up his jewels. The world don't see much when he looks around this crowd. But when Jesus looks around this crowd, he sees diamonds and rubies and pearls and emeralds and sapphires. We're a peculiar treasure unto God because we took that measure of faith that he's given to every man and placed it in him. We see the refrain of praise and the regard for his people, but throughout the rest of the chapter, he really deals with the resources of his power. When God interferes in the affairs of men, he shows his handiwork, and he shows his strength and power. I'm glad we serve a God of all power. It's nothing too hard for God. Hmm? There's never been a challenge offered to God. He's overcame anything that's ever came His way. He's a great, great and mighty God. I'm interested in verse number 7 this morning. It says, He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of His treasuries. I was reading the Word of God this week, and I come across that phrase, the wind out of his treasuries. And that just kind of pricked my heart. I began to think about that and meditate on that and make some notes about that. And I want to preach with God's help on the wind out of his treasuries. If you study the Bible, you know there's a literal interpretation of the scriptures. But throughout the Bible, there's wonderful studies. There's studies on numerology. There's studies on typology. There's studies on all kinds of facets of the Bible. And if you study the typology of the Bible, you'll find that wherever you find the word wind mentioned, it's always a picture of the Holy Spirit of God. And out of the treasuries of everything God's got, 
He'll send the wind of the Holy Spirit our way to impact our lives. I want to preach on that thought, the wind out of the treasuries. Can I say there's the wind of the Holy Spirit, that's the breath of, of conception. In Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Can I say the breath of God uh, brought conception to a glorified mud pie uh, that God made uh, out of the dust of the earth. Uh, he formed man out of the dust, fashioned him like Almighty God, uh, but it wasn't until uh, the breath of God came that it brought life uh, unto that uh, uh, entity that he made. Uh, I'm reminded in Ezekiel's day uh, that Ezekiel was uh, called of God to prophesy uh, to a valley of dry bones. Uh, and the Bible said, Lo, they were very dry. Sounds like Baptist churches to me. Uh, uh, but, uh, 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 but he prophesied to uh, uh, Ezekiel uh, 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 to prophesy to the wind. Uh, and the wind came, uh, and the wind began to blow, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, those bones stood up, uh, and then flesh and sinews came upon them, uh, and those bones got up as a mighty army uh, and walked about. Uh, hey, uh, where there is no life, uh, all it takes is some breath from God, uh, and life uh, uh, takes hold. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 1, uh, and you hath he quickened or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, hey, when you were lost without God, didn't even know God existed. Uh, you were dead to God, uh, dead in your sins. Uh, but the Holy Spirit came to where you was, uh, began to deal with your heart. Uh, and when you put your faith in the Lord, uh, you that once were dead was made alive. Uh, aren't you glad for the breath of God uh, that brings life to dead sinners? Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah. When I got saved, I received everlasting life. I'll never die. I'll just change wardrobes one day. Put off this mortality. Put on immortality. And so shall I ever be with the Lord. My foot's feeling pretty good. I'm thankful for the breath of conception. The breath of life it comes from God. Folks say, why do you care so much about God? He brought me life. I was born into this world because of God, but thanks be unto God, I got born again. Hallelujah. And I'll go back to be with God. Uh, there's the breath of conception. That's the wind of the Holy Spirit. I thought about the wind. That's the breeze of comfort. Now, I know you don't believe this, but I grew up in the country. And I'm old enough to remember when you didn't have central air conditioning. Uh, three of us remember that. Mm. Uh, and I remember on warm days, you could throw up the window, and a nice cool breeze would come through the house, and it brings comfort. Mm. Hey, I'm all for taking a road trip down there where Naj and Naren's from, because you can get a breeze off that ocean, and it'll bring great comfort. Mm. Some of you will get that for you. Before you leave, but I want to tell you something. You can go through life and things can get a little hot. Things can get a little troublesome. Things can get a little rough. But a cool breeze from heaven can come and bring comfort to your troubled soul. I'm glad He's the God of all comfort. I'm glad that, hey, uh, He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, I'm glad He knows where we are, uh, what we're facing, what we're going through. Uh, uh, in the good times, Brother Brian, in the tough times, uh, and there are some times uh, uh, that God knows uh, we need the Holy Spirit to just blow our way, uh, uh, to bring comfort, uh, uh, to help us, uh, uh, to bring peace to our troubled souls. Uh, I'm thankful for the breeze of comfort. It's one of the winds of His treasuries. Mm -mm. Listen, you can have everything this world has to offer, but if you don't have God in your life, you're miserable. But you, can't, you can get to a point where you don't have two nickels to rub together, but just a little breeze from heaven brings satisfaction to your soul. Are you listening? Mm -mm. I'm thankful for the breeze of comfort. 
I thought about the wind that's blowing on course. You know, there are times if we've left our own conceits, we'll get off course. Hmm. We're liable to step off into the ditch. But when we yield ourselves and throw up our sails toward heaven, God sends a wind that blows our ship right on course, huh? I'm glad we got a captain that knows which direction we need to go. And I'm glad that there's a wind that blows us on course. Uh, lean not unto our own understanding. We're to lean on Him. Trust in Him. And my dear friends, He'll take us all the way to glory. Hmm? What a blessing. You don't have to fall into a ditch. You don't have to fall out with God. You can stay right on course. Just keep your sails up. Huh? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and just let Him take us on course. What a blessing. Hmm? A lot of folks get off course because they get their eyes set on something else. That prodigal got messed up when he saw, started looking at the lights of the city. Hmm? Boy, that, that, that appealed to him. Took him off course. Lot was doing pretty good till he got to looking down there at Sodom and thought, boy, that'd be a good place to raise the family. He got way off course, huh? Can I say, if you quit looking around and start looking up, you'll stay right on course, huh? I thought about this wind that's a treasury of God. And there's the blasting of correction. Hmm. Sometimes the Lord has to send a stiff wind our way to straighten us out. I don't know about you. I kind of like thunderstorms. I don't mind rainstorms. Snowstorms can be pretty if they leave the ice off of it. But I want to tell you something. Windstorms, they can be a little fearful. Especially if there's some tornadic wind coming your way. I remember 1969. I know I'm old. When that tornado hit Sailor Park, it came right up the east side of Cincinnati, came right into Claremont County where we lived, knocked out power lines and everything. I remember going by this big old house just outside of Owensville where I grew up, and they had a massive tree. That tree was probably there when George Washington was president. But that tree got uprooted. The roots were 15 feet tall. Tornado took it out. Can I say, if the wind's strong enough, nothing's safe. They build things to withstand earthquakes and hurricanes, but it is amazing how much they've rebuilt New Orleans and still every other year it gets wiped out. Well, sometimes the Lord has to send a wind our way to correct us because we haven't been looking up. We've gotten off course. We've gotten our eyes on earthly things instead of heavenly things. And the Lord has... I'm glad He chastens His own. Matter of fact, Hebrews tells us that if we're without chastisement, we're a bastard, not a son. Hmm? God chastens His children. Let me help you something. He doesn't chasten the devil's children. Somebody tells you they're saved and they live in sin and dwell in sin and God never ever corrects them about that sin. They don't belong to God. Hmm? Uh, let me help you something. I can't even step one step towards a mud puddle, the Holy Ghost don't say. Don't do it. And if I continue on that direction, He'll correct me. Hmm? Uh, listen, when I was a child, where's my Aunt Lynn? You move every service. I can't ever find you. Uh, she's trying to confuse the devil, but she's confusing the preacher. That's what she's doing. Uh, you keep your mouth shut. When I was a kid, I didn't get many whippings. Did I? I didn't get many. Uh, my mama loved me too much to whip me. That's why I'm as honorary as I am today. No comment out of you, Marcy, huh? Uh but when I got them, I didn't like them. Mm -mm. Ooh, my boys are older now. I use this analogy. I wouldn't use it when they're kids. See, back when I was a boy, we were allowed to be boys. 
He's allowed to play outside, play in the dirt. Uh, had slingshots. Who remembers what a slingshot is? Hallelujah. Huh? Dennis the Menace had one, so everybody should have one, right? Huh? When I was seven, I got my first BB gun. Aunt Sue bought it for me. When I was eight, I got a high-powered BB gun. Mm -mm. Eight shouldn't have a high-powered BB gun. In case you ever have an eight-year-old. I, I haven't given up on you. I know you're in the bachelor's club, but I hadn't given up on you. Uh, well, my dad had a certain set of rules because, you know, he'd let me shoot his 22s and all that, but, you know, he always had to be present when I dealt with a real one. But when it came to mine, I was never bringing it in the house loaded. It was always to empty it. Now, we had about 400 acres of woods behind us, so there's plenty of places to empty it. Well, I was in a hurry one day, come in, I didn't empty my BB gun. And it was cocked. Well, I laid down, took a nap, laid on the couch. I got up, grabbed my BB gun. You should never put your finger in the trigger guard unless you're going to pull the trigger. I didn't know that at eight. I know it well now. My high-powered BB gun went out, went off, and came this close. I'm taking out the TV screen. Fortunately, it got the cabinet. My dad showed no mercy that day. My dad was not a big man. He probably only had about a 28-inch waist. But that 28-inch belt did a number on me because 50 years later I'm still remembering how whipping I got and I've never ever shot at a TV screen again huh? you gotta remember in, in 1971 if you had a TV that was something and you certainly didn't want to shoot, shoot the, the picture out but I, listen my dad wore me out and he should have I broke the rule hmm what can I say? Whenever God chastens His children, we deserve it. God's not a tyrant. He's not sitting up in heaven with a big stick just waiting for us to step out of line so He can whack us with the stick. No, He's long-suffering to us. Word. Hey, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and God will woo you, and God will woo you, and God will woo you. He'll give you chance and chance and chance to get it made right. But if it comes to a point you're not going to get it made right, He knows how to correct you, friend. Uh, and when He does, you know it comes from Him. Hmm. Can I say there's the blasting of correction? I also find that in the wind of his treasuries there's boisterous conviction. You remember when Peter walked on the water? In Matthew fourteen thirty it says, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Now we know the Lord reached out and saved him. Immediately the Lord was there and pulled him up. And they too walked back on the water back to the ship. Now don't throw off on old Peter, okay? Uh, he did have enough faith to get out of the boat. The other eleven didn't. Uh, 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 but when he got out there, uh, instead of keeping his eyes on Jesus, because just as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, uh, he's walking on the water. He's doing something you and I have never been able to do. Uh, uh, but when he got to looking at the wind uh, and that it was boisterous, he became afraid, began to sink, uh, cried, Lord, save me. And the Lord saved him. Uh, hey, the Lord knows how to send a boisterous wind. Uh, there are folks sitting on a church pew uh, week in and week out. Uh, uh, they say because they've been baptized or because they've shook a preacher's hand, uh, because they come to church, they're all right with the Lord. Uh, but the Lord knows how to send a boisterous wind, uh, how to bring conviction to a soul, uh, how to let you know you need Him. Uh, and the moment you cry out, Lord, save me, He's there to save you. Hallelujah. Huh? I'm glad for that boisterous wind of conviction. Next month will be 48 years I've been saved by the good grace of God. Amen. I bless the Lord for that boisterous wind of conviction that came to a ten-and-a-half-year-old boy 
let him know you need to be born again. And that night when I cried, Lord, he was there immediately to save me. And then I thought about this. For those who will not accept him, for those who reject his warnings, and just as in our community there's stop signs and stop lights, those stop signs and stop lights are warnings. You see those red signs or red lights, you're supposed to stop. If you don't, trouble could come your way. And you can tempt fate, but sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. And I say in the journey of life, all through your life, God's got warning signs. He'll allow you to see something on a church sign. He'll allow you to see something in a commercial. He'll allow somebody uh, uh, that you work with or live around say something to you. Allow you to come to church and hear a message that God loves you and God wants to save you. And don't die and go to hell because God don't want you to die and go to hell. But there are some, Brother Bob sad to say, they ignore the warning signs. They tempt fate. They think they're going to live forever in this life. Or they think, boy, when I get old, I'll get right with God. There's only one problem. You don't know when your day is coming up, when you're going, when you're going to die. I've spent a lot of time in cemeteries. You see people every age there. Everyone had good intentions of living to be old. Some don't live to be old. And can I say, for those that ignore the warning signs and leave this world without Jesus, there's the wind of buffeting condemnation. Jesus Christ was buffeted in the hall of praetorium for you and I. He was beaten beyond recognition to pay for your sin and my sin. Was nailed to an old rugged cross, was buried and rose again, victorious over death, hell and the grave, proving He was God, proving that there was a way, good news, a, a way of salvation for sinners. But those who reject Him, those that refuse to heed the warnings everything he suffered they'll suffer for all of eternity because they would not let him pay for their sins there is a buffeting condemnation that will happen for all of eternity to those who rejected Jesus Christ friend you don't have to suffer that Jesus Christ will pay your sin debt today if you're willing to come put your faith in Him, He'll save you and change your life forevermore. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. That's a good thing. It's so simple even a child can understand. But if you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Say, preacher, I've been too, too bad. I've done too much wrong. God couldn't save me. Well, the great apostle Paul who wrote almost half of the New Testament he said that he was the chiefest of sinners. If God saved him, he can save anybody. And I want to tell you something, you haven't went too far. Say, how do you know that preacher? Because you're here today. God's pleading with you. You haven't went too far. You could be saved today. You say, preacher, I know I'm saved. But I've not felt the wind in a long time. I've got good news. Today's a new day. 1 John 1 9 says, If we'll confess our sins, He's faithful just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you'll come and tell the Lord you sure would like to feel the wind again, your life hadn't counted much for Him, He'll, he'll put wind in your sail again, friend. So how you know? Because I've had to pray that prayer a time or two in my life, and guess what? He's faithful and true. And He will, once again, blow in your sails. I'm thankful for the good touch of God. This day and age, people look at you like you're crazy. If you if you got the peace of God in your heart, if you're satisfied with your life, if you're longing for Jesus to come, I'm glad it's real. I'm glad He's real. And I'm glad that He has a peace that passes all understanding. And friend, He's no respecter of persons. For what He's done for others, He'll do for you. Some of you, it's been a while since you felt the wind of God. You might have need that breeze of comfort today. You might need to get in the altar and say, God, sure would like to feel your touch again. Some of you might be troubled this morning. You might need to come and say, Lord, can you do something to speak peace to these troubled waters? If not, Lord, could you speak peace to my soul? 
He'll send the wind of peace your way. Some of you just might be seeking some answers and say, God, could you show me? He says, seek and you shall find. Hmm? May he allow you to be here today just to hear one more time how much he loves you. You might want to come and thank him for loving you so much. I don't know what your heart is going through, but I know Jesus loves you. And Jesus cares for you. And he said, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Certainly, if you're here today and you've never been born again, today may be your day. Why don't you come? Give your heart and life to Jesus. You'll never, ever regret getting born again and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. Well, the altar is a place to do business with God. Maybe somebody here is really going through something and God just touches your heart to maybe go put your arms around them, tell them you care about them. That'd be a good day to do that. Folks are starting to come. Let's all stand. If you're here today and you're not saved, we invite you to come. We're going to pray. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved, friend. Why don't you come? Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Miss Renee's come to the piano while they pick out a song. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Lord, I know it's just a simple message, but God, I'm thankful for the wind in your treasuries. Lord, I'm thankful for the treasure the wind is in our lives. The sweet Holy Spirit of God. Now, God, I fear in a crowd this side there may be somebody not ready to meet you. I pray the wind of conviction would blow their way. And God, we'd see them born again. Lord, there's so many other winds we could have dealt with from the Bible, but we're sure glad for that wind of conviction. Now, God, speak to hearts. These in the altar, whatever they're here for, God, bless them, help them. God, if there's somebody here really struggling, Lord, just needs a... If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.